hi hi how are you i'm glad to be here again with you and first of all thank you so much for all the love that i got under my first video uh, journal that was not expected uh, it's very very appreciated and i feel really special at this moment so thank you so much for doing it and i'm glad you enjoyed this and i hope you will enjoy also this video i'm making for you today so this is a little bit special one i was thinking i can give you some insight in a little bit of my creative process and in the way my brain works and how i find inspiration and it's going to be the answer to the questions who are these people where to get um, images for your uh, mixed media journaling projects because i think i have got some experience i can share with you so first of all the truth is they're all kind of my people which means when I'm using the images, I really try to make sure I'm the owner of the images. And there are two reasons behind that. First of all, I really want my projects to be personal and unique. I use the face of people I know and I turn them into somebody different. And I tell the story of their life. I show my love, I show my feelings. And the second reason is, it's always safer, <laughs> I think, to use somebody you know. They are not going to tell you that you can't do it. For me as a product designer, what it is, why it is important to use the images that I own, uh, it is just to make sure that whatever is in my little booklet is going to be unique. It's going to be uh, just mine and special. And I won't see the same images used by somebody else just because they found them in the same uh, corner of the internet. Let's have a closer look now. Let me show you how I really think uh, about the photos. What do I do with them? How I get them? And there's first group of photos, of course, and I think this is not going to be a surprise. There are photos of me or my husband and uh, my closest family and friends. So, for example, what I did in the past uh, it was just taking photos of my face so I have like generic photos of faces and these ones these ones I can reprint so many times and I feel no guilt when I do all these kind of strange things to them and because it's my face it makes my product more personal but the real reason is I use them over and over is they're so easy to get. So there's no problem in printing them in bigger size and creating collage like this. So this is the same face you've just seen before. I just paint over it and then you can't really tell who is on the photo. The same example, this is again the same photo you've seen before, just printed in a little bit bigger scale and you have it, right? And a great example is this project. This is um, my husband's uh, face and the whole collage was uh, inspired by him. So I've got all these elements which are so special. And that's one of the photos I took years ago and it was just the right size, the right angle. And I just decided to work with it. And one more example, this collage. This was not printed on the photo paper. This one is a print I made on um, traditional photocopy paper with the laser printer because I wanted to be, uh, have it completely flat, but I really paint a lot over it. So it has to be laser print, not the inkjet because it will be hard to protect it. The colors may bleed. So that will be the first group. Uh, photos of myself, photos of my uh, closest uh, people, my, my husband, my mom, uh, my friends. These are the ones I keep reprinting. And if you feel like, okay, but I don't like my face, I don't want to use the, my husband's face, think about getting some, you know, the good faces from uh, well-known people, which will be not copyrighted. For example, uh, 
actors from the old times, you know, all these faces are amazing. Beautiful people from the Renaissance paintings or from any other era that you like. They are just amazing and you can use them without being afraid that somebody will get offended or they're copyrighted. By all means, there's nothing wrong in using the images you found on the internet, especially if you know the source and you can make sure that the owners or the creators of the photo, they are absolutely okay with you using that as part of your artwork. I know there are some very beautiful projects done inspired by the images from internet and it's all fine, whatever gives you inspiration, it's precious. Once you're working on it, make sure the quality of the paper is going to be uh, good because uh, it's really easier to work when you have your images printed on the nicer quality paper, something that is not going to bleed, than something which is not going to warp too much. And, um, you know, sometimes the accidents happen not because that you made a mistake, it's because the materials you were using, they were not the greatest quality. So please don't be hard on yourself. The second group of the photos, they are old family photos. The old family photos that I uh, copied. And if you have old images of your family, by all means, I really beg you, please take them to somebody who can scan them for you or just do it yourself. Make sure you've got copies because you never know what may happen and losing them will be very painful. And I am the owner of a huge range of the family photos. I'll just try to show you uh, some of them. Yeah, I'm sure you can recognize some of these faces because um, some of my close family my grandparents, my grand-grandparents, my husband's aunts and uncles, and uh, his grand and grand-grandparents, they are all somewhere in our, uh, pro uh, in our products. The ones I made for Prima Marketing, there are some faces used, but also they are on my projects as well. So here I'm showing you the copies. They are not the originals, of course. I think this is also part of the fun when you're a product designer, you're able to put uh, some product, some images into people's hands without telling them what they are and to see what they're going to do with them, what they are going to uh, see in those pictures. They will make their own stories. What I was doing with my family photos, I was using them for journals. This is the way I work with the old photos. I just look at them and I try to um, try to tell the story I see. I try to show my love. I try to give you uh, some of the um, clues, maybe, to guess who the people are, what they were thinking, what they were doing. And uh, of course, there's uh, always very big open space for the creativity and for guessing and for playing and as i said before if it's your property if it's your family uh, or your friends or somebody that you know or you got this uh, image somewhere and it's now yours you don't ha really have to be afraid that somebody will say like you should not do that right and uh, that's why i really love working with uh, photos that uh, are my family photos and there's one more thing about the photos, I have to tell you, um, most of the family photos I have, they are not very, very old. They are usually done during the Second World War or just after that, because all the older ones, they were completely gone and destroyed. We can't find any of them. My husband's family, Andrew's family, they were more lucky. They had more of the photos uh, that were done before. They're older ones and sometimes I really feel that this is just not fair. I'm so happy he has his, but I don't really have uh, photos of my grand, grand, no, great grandparents. It's just one or two and he's got quite a good bunch. So again, if you have your photos, if you've got access to them, make sure you have copies. 
because it's so very important. I think it's going to be important to underline that the best images to work with will be the ones which are printed in the real photo lab, not like this fast machine in a drugstore, the real photo lab quality. And this is what it is. They are Fuji film, crystal archive. So this is real matte photo paper, like the one, the old school one. And they are very hard to damage. It's very easy to use them in the collage project because you can paint over them and they are not going to be too hard uh, to accept the color if they are matte, if they are glossy finish, you have to use your clear gesso first and then you can work on the top of the photo. So there's the third group of the uh, photos that I use in my uh, personal project, but also in the products that I make for you. And I absolutely love them. I can't resist when I uh, find them. They are my adopted family. They are my uh, flea market adopted family, to be honest. They are the photos that I find and buy intentionally, uh, looking for uh, different uh, photos. I try to have a um, look and pick the ones which are the most interesting expressions on their faces with the most interesting outfits, the exquisite hats or the amazing dresses, or sometimes it's just a matter like I feel the connection with these people. So uh, I own all these images and I usually use the reprints, except the cabinet cards, because I love these um, sturdy backgrounds, beautiful finish, and I copy them. And then finally, I, I feel brave enough to use them in my actual project. And here is a great story I have to tell you about adopted family. <laughs> And um, it all happened on, uh, on uh, one day when I was teaching classes in Glasgow. Uh, I went to an antique store and I found two of the most amazing and beautiful photo albums. I will show you both of them. And one of them was this one, filled with the old cabinet cards. I was... Uh, so lucky. I could not believe how, how lucky I was. I just could not leave it behind. And the second thing was, I just felt some connection with them. And I found this book as well. I, I can't tell you how much I love this one. It's not so special as the cabinet cards, but it was filled with the photos of most adorable family you can imagine. And I have some of my favorite photos of them. And I really believe they had to be absolutely lovely and really adorable people who celebrated life, who were having great time together. When I look at their, at their faces, I just can't, I just can't think about anything else that that just, I had to take them home, right? I had to take them home. So when I was opening that at home later, when I got back from, from Glasgow, what I discovered uh, when I started to take the photos out from that book, first of all, there's the whole long message in the front. Unfortunately, there's no surname, so I can't learn who the person was, who was writing all that beautiful story here. And the second part, even better, was once I started removing the photos and I wanted to scan them on my scanner, right? What I did when I removed the first photos, I just could not believe my eyes. There was second layer of the photos under. There were two layers of photos, one under another. So it was like a double treat. So the hidden story under the story. It was amazing. Really, I, I just, I think they, I just kept half of the photos in the book because I could not really do anything else. I just have it on my shelf and I sometimes come and rub it because I think they are really special. <laughs> and I believe 
you know, touching the old things that have some stories behind, uh, looking at them, looking for uh, new stories that may be hidden in there, looking for inspiration is the best way to really start your creative process. I hope that uh, gave you some of the ideas uh, about uh, the inspiration for the projects, about where the fraud photos are coming from, the ones that you can see in, in my projects, in my products. And I hope you enjoyed the video. I will be back, I promise. And if you would like to uh, give me some ideas what you would like to see here and what would be the ways uh, to make you a little bit more involved, just let me know. This is uh, really fun to make, to be honest, to talk to you and imagine you on the other side. And I enjoy it more and more, <laughs> to be honest. I think, uh, I think there's great potential in it. Thank you so much for watching. It was uh, Finn here from my studio and uh, see you in the next video journal.